What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys a powerful technique to profile your code before optimizing. So at a high level, before I get into it, I just want to say that due to the dynamic nature of Python as a programming language, it oftentimes has surprising behaviors in terms of its runtime performance. So portions of the code that we think can be very fast are actually slower than we think and vice versa. And the true slowdown of the code itself in a program can be a lot of the times obscure, especially when you're working with big projects in practice. And a lot of times you're going to want to find a way to optimize your program and you're going to want to find where to optimize in your program because there's only specific parts of your program that are taking a lot of the CPU resources or GPU resources that you are working with. So in order to better find where to optimize your code, you're going to want to use a profiler because um, using your intuition can waste a lot of time and you want to use a tool designed to help you optimize code. And thankfully, the Python programming language has a built-in tool called Profiler. There's actually two built-in profilers, the C profiler and the regular Python profiler. And today we'll be going over the C profiler, which is simply a C extension of the regular Python profiler. And this is actually a more, uh, a better version because it has less of an impact in terms of the, the performance on your code while it's being profiled. So the pure Python alternative imposes a high overhead, so it might affect or highly obscure the results of your code. So that's why we're using a better practice here, the built-in C profiler, to profile your code. So the example we have today is actually a really common problem that you see in leak code online for many beginner Python programmers. And this uh, problem is called the largest sum contiguous subarray. So given an array of size n, the task is to find the sum of contiguous subarray with r with the largest sum. So we have this example here. The largest continuous subarray within this array is, has a sum of seven. So that, that would be the answer. And that's the problem we're looking at today. So it's a relatively simple problem, but we're just, showing, we're just showing a simple problem for the sake of simplicity, but this can scale really well to huge projects. And you can actually profile a huge project to see where in that huge project this would be applicable to. But we're going simple here just for the sake of demonstration. So we have this example where we're trying to solve this problem. And you can imagine me as a new Python programmer. Let's say I'm really new to language. I don't know what's going on and I wanna find a way to optimize this code. So I know uh, because I wrote this code beforehand that this is actually a suboptimal approach to solve the, the maximum sum subarray problem where what I'm doing is essentially I am using nested loops to calculate the sum of all possible contiguous subarrays and I'm keeping the track of the, the maximum sum and eventually um, printing out the maximum sum by doing that. And if you know about O of n time, you know this is O of n squared time, where n is the number of elements in the list. So this is quadratic time, and oftentimes we want uh, linear time or even less when we're doing algorithms, especially for coding interviews and even in practice as well. So we're gonna try to optimize this code, and we wanna figure out where we wanna optimize this code using the profiler, which will help us do that. So in order to get started with the C profiler, the thing you have to do is to simply import C profile um, from C profile, import profile, and you don't have to pip install anything because it's built into Python. And then what I'm going to do down here is I'm gonna uncomment this to start doing that. I already wrote the code for that. And you could see I instantiated it on this line where I just said profiler equals profile, which is what I imported from C profile. And then what I want to do next is run the test function that I have defined here in the profiler itself to get the statistics based on this function. So what this function is, I'm simply just running another function where I pass it this array. And let me delete this, we don't need that anymore. But so this function is simply calling the function I'm concerned about, and it's passing in an array. And this array is just a, an array of random values from negative 10 to 10 with length of 1,000, and I'm just passing it for the sake of demonstration purposes. Now, another thing you want to import when using the profiler is pstats, which is also built into Python. And that's to extract the specific stats you want from the profiler. So the profiler can give you a lot of stats and it could be a little overwhelming, but in this video, I'll show you some really important ones that you're gonna, you're gonna want to use. But if you're more interested in that, you can read it online. Just know that I'm importing pstats to get the statistics from the profiler itself. So that's pretty much all you have to know in terms of the, the stats portion here, as you could see. And then I'm just printing that out to show what it's going to give me. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So I'm running it with this array, as I mentioned, and I want to see what I'm getting in terms of the values, which I'll explain here after I'm done running it. Okay, so after running this function, what we see is an output in the form of a table where information is uh, nicely organized by this function that we called. And the data sample, as we know, is only taken from the time the profiler was active, which is nice um, during this uh, run call method that we have here. So all this time is only taken when this was called. 
to avoid the obscurity. So in terms of these columns here, I'll just go ahead and explain them really quick. So the end calls column is simply the number of calls to the function during the profiling time. And the two time is the number of seconds spent executing the function, excluding the time spent executing other functions it calls. And we can see here it goes function by function, by the way. So you could see that um, the profiling basics that pi on line 20 test. So it's telling me test was only called once, which makes sense. And then we have maximum subarray and efficient was called once. Um, and then we have this per call column here as well. Uh, this is two time per call actually. So this is the average number of seconds spent in the function each time it is called, excluding time spent executing other functions it calls. So this value here is just this value divided by this value, okay? Next we have cum time, which is the cumulative number of seconds spent executing the function, including time spent in all other functions it calls. And finally, we have cum time per call, which is just cum time divided by n calls. So, I mean, in simple terms, a high value here is something you know you want to look into and try to optimize. And for the sake of this problem, I already know where the the optimization issue is, and it's in this double for loop, which I don't need. I I can actually do better here and do um, a linear time dynamic programming approach to do this rather than a double for loop. And that kind of that kind of uh, is hinted at here as well. So let's imagine I didn't know the dynamic programming approach and I didn't know what was causing the issue and I'm, I'm a really beginner Python programmer, I don't know what's going on. I could look here and say, oh, this built-in sum is called 500,500 500, times and this built-in max is also called 500,500 500, times. Let me try to find a way to um, optimize this and let's say after some analysis I say hey I thought of another approach I don't need this inner for loop I can use the dynamic programming approach that's just a very simple uh, example for this video but we could imagine it generalizes very well for much more complex scenarios uh, just for simplicity sake we we have that and we find out that the dynamic programming solution is much uh, better in this case oh yeah, and also by the way uh, if you scroll up a little bit it tells you how how long that that whole profile took so it told us 0.7 nine one seconds so i have the dynamic programming solution already on the side here so i'm just going to copy it in for the sake of time in this video and show you that we are going to achieve better performance there so i'm just going to save that so we, as you can see we have 0.791 and then now what we're going to do is we're going to rerun this and see the performance of our code in terms of the time so let's run that and see what happens so we can see the <laughs> 2,000 function calls in 0, 0.0 seconds. So way, way, way faster. Wow, that's pretty impressive in terms of the result. So, I mean, that's pretty much it in terms of finding uh, statistics that help you better profile your code. I know that was a simple example, but I hope you got a general idea of how to use this profiler in uh, bigger projects because like I said many times, it does generalize well to big projects. And oftentimes when you're working with big projects, that's where you find the issues in finding where to optimize your code because the code isn't as simple as a elite code problem that you have here. So I hope you learned something. If you did, guys, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section below. If you have any questions as well, let me know. And as always, stay tuned.